Hey guys, this is Christopho. Welcome to episode number three of the Solaris tutorial. Okay, uh, let's go back to our tutorial quest, of course. Um, first, I have to rename this one to something more precise. Chapter 2, first map. First, okay, map. Slides mm, displaying problem and this time chapter 3 we are going to make a new map and we will talk about um, the basic features of the map editor like um, more about tiles, um, copy pasting tiles, uh, resizing, this kind of things and the layers and the ground of tiles. So, layers and grounds. Okay. Let's make a, a bigger map than before. Tile set, light world, music. Overworld, still the same. Okay, um, one thing you can do is show the grid. It will help you, um, especially if you are not an expert of um, Zelda Link to the Past graphics. Okay, so to begin, we are going to build a house of course um, so let's go this is the main wall of the house mm. the corners ah okay So you remember uh, when uh, you you pick a tile here, um, keep your mouse pressed, and you can resize the tile you are being you are you are creating. Then then um, if the size is not correct, you can select it again and press the R key for uh, resize, or you can also do a right click and resize but pressing R is faster. Then we have the roof like this. It's a pretty big house. I made something wrong here. Resize and it's fixed. This is wrong here too. So yes, um, t different tiles can overlap. This is like in um, Multimedia Fusion, if you know this software. And this is different from RPG Maker, where all tiles only have a size of um, 16 by 16, and you cannot uh, resize them, they cannot overlap. So this is more flexible. And I hope you will find this nice. Um, okay. Click to select. You can also do a selection rec rectangle like this and move your house. And you can do copy paste, control C control V and you have your the, the the same part of the roof here and also here it's still the same mm. oh I just made a mistake the the houses of Zelda Link to the Past are quite tricky 
um, they are not the the easiest thing to start with. Let's make the entrance. Like this, like this. And maybe a window. Okay. It's a big house. Okay, um, then here is a nice trick. What you should do is a special map. I will, I will call this map outside store. It will be used as a storage for uh, all kind of objects. I mean, you have your house uh, on this map. You can just copy paste it in the store in the storage, and then. Uh, you will be able to reuse it on a lot of maps. Um, you should do other kinds of house in the storage, um, like the one with the red roof, uh, other kind of of roof here, other kinds of walls. And then once you have your storage map, um, it becomes very handy to to make more complex maps. Okay. Um, oh yes, I said that you can overlap. Several tiles can overlap, like this one and this one. Um, to change the order, you can do right click, bring to front, or bring to back bring to back and you don't you, you no longer see it bring to back again with the other and um and this one too yes there is a keyboard shortcut to this for this if you press b b it means bottom and t top so bring to back is b bring to front is t Okay, I think this is it for the house. Let's make some trees now. Okay, here are the um, the usual trees of A Link to the Past. They are separated in several tiles. You will see why in in a few moments. Okay, this part is a wall, and these parts are traversable. And mm, oh, oh no! By the way, um, to select several entities like this you have to press control or shift and uh, what was I saying? Yes, this part is um, traversable too but is displayed above the hero actually it is by default on the high layer when the other ones were on, on the low layer there are three, three layers in Solarus um, you can show or hide each layer from here. If I remove the high layer, um, I don't see this part anymore. And if I remove the low layer, I remove almost everything. <laughs> Let's play this map to to see what we have. We're gonna have a slight problem. So I made a destination, remember, to be able to start at a valid place on the map. I just have to tell my main script to the load uh, the chapter 3 map instead of chapter 2.
Okay. Um, so the walls are correctly walls, no problem. I cannot traverse them. But I can traverse um, the leaves of the of the tree because they are displayed on the high layer, so they don't collide at all with the player, with the hero. Different layers are really, really independent. So if the hero is on the low layer, um, he can traverse whatever is on higher layers. So um, what you can do to fix this problem is simply put um, some kind of wall behind the tree. So any wall uh, will be okay, like this one. And as you have um, the leaves of the tree on the higher layer, you don't see the wall. Okay. And trees are so common that actually I don't use this ugly wall. <laughs> I made a special wall just for that. It's here. Just with the appropriate size. Okay. Um, trees are often mm, in group in groups of several trees in Earning to the Past and um, they touch each other uh, with some special way. I mean, they are never like this, okay? By the way, I should save a wall in my store, in my storage space, to use them later on every maps, on all maps. Okay, so I was saying they are never like this. They are more exactly, you remove this part, this part, and you resize all of this. Um, by the way, you can resize several times um, at the same time. You select them, and then you do, like always, resize, or you press R, and then you resize your trees. Uh, of course, resize them horizontally because vertically it doesn't make much sense in this case. And this one you cannot resize uh, the same way because <laughs> it it does not have the same size. And maybe it's a mistake, but never mind. Okay, and let's finish the right part. You can you can also add some other trees like that, and now it really looks like a link to the past. Um, I just used Control um, Z to undo the last change because I need that probably here. Okay, here is uh, how to create a nice line of trees. Um, I have talked a bit about um, uh, the ground properties of tiles. Uh, this one is a wall, this one is traversable, um, this one is traversable too. And this one is a wall. But if you edit the tile set, you can see the, the property of each tile. This one is traversable, um, etc. So there are a lot of different grounds, and I wanted to show you. Oh, sorry. 
Oh, by the way, um, I am moving the the view like this inside the scrollers. I forgot to tell you. Um, I'm pressing. I'm keeping the middle mouse button pressed to do this. It's really really handy. It works in the tileset editor and it also works in the map editor. I always do that and I forgot to tell you how. It's much much faster than uh, going to the scroller and do that or that. But you can also use the keyboard uh, arrows to, to move your map. And there is a zoom. You can zoom out like that and you can use control and um, the mouse wheel like in most picture uh, softwares uh, what was I saying? yes, grounds and I wanted to show you the holes so this is the hole of Link to the Past it has the whole ground property this means that if I put a hole a hole um, somewhere in my map like that it will be very dangerous. What happens if you go near a wall? If you go near a wall, um, the behavior is very similar to a link to the past. So you <coughs> you see, you you can you can fall, and if you fall, you lose some life. In this uh, precise case, uh, we never talked about life and stuff. So by default, the save game was initialized with only one life point. And when you fall into a hole, you lose one life point. So what happens now is that I have game over, okay? And when you have game over, the save game simply restarts. Um, we will see of course later how to make a special game over uh, game over sequence and with a menu to to save the game to save and continue save and kit etc so uh, the behavior is very very similar to Link to the past and this is something um, hard coded into the engine so if you don't want this kind of hole uh, you you can still uh, make your own one, uh, your own special entity in Lua, but it won't. It probably won't simply be uh, sometimes that you pick here and place here, and you have the behavior. This will be a dynamic entity, um, probably a custom entity. I think um, this one. <laughs> we'll talk about them much, much later in the tutorial. For now, uh, I'm just explaining the basics, okay? Um, and to finish, I will also show you the the water. There are two kinds of water ground. The shallow water, you can walk on it. And the deep water, you drown if you walk on, on deep water. Unless you have the, the swimming ability. So it is here. This is the shallow water tile. Mm, let's make a very small pond. Okay, like this. So put these. Okay, let's try that. And again, this is very, very similar to Link to the Past. 
you have the same animation when you walk in water. Okay, I think that's it for this chapter. Um, now you know more about using the map editor, um, resizing things, copy-paste, um, and more importantly the layers and uh, the grounds of tiles. So thank you for watching, uh, don't hesitate to ask if you have questions, and see you next time. Bye bye!